Like, yeah. Really. But I liked it. Savage. Nice. Oh man. Don't it's you savage know? Time. I'm a savage. <laughs> so you are now reacting to the four-member girl group Espa and their 2021 release Savage. In next level, we were savage. left off in the. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You said that, and I was like, <laughs> just like sheesh. So, in the song Next Level that we recently reacted to, we were left off in the Kwangya, where Espa and Novice are looking for the Black Mamba who hacked the real world's connection to their eyes. But as soon as they arrive at their destination, the Black Mamba attacks and traps them in a hallucination quest, which is another realm where Black Mamba's venomous poison causes them to hallucinate. What will happen next? We don't know! Yeah. This sounds pretty cool. If they don't, if they don't win, it's gonna be a major subversion of my expectations. <laughs> <laughs> the song is composed by Jolly, Jeremy Tay Jasper, and Kirsten Collins, of who we had the absolute blast of interviewing about the creation of this song. I remember walking out of my session, and there's like this little briefing room, and like you can kind of like hear what other people are creating <laughs> in the other rooms, but you don't want to like disturb them. And I remember we go out there, and like the A and R's are out there, and all we hear is this like metallic sounds, and Kirsten is just. Ah. The song is also co-composed by Yu Young Jin, and I am sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, but hop. Boy rich? Isn't that whole blah like French for oboe? Maybe it's that. Oh, like, kind of like oboe. oboe. No wait, that's just. Is it oboe rich? Oboe rich. Cool. Three, two, one. Wow. Oh. Oh my gosh! Don't you know I'm a savage? I'm a killer, Nargella. Oh, that metallic sound, jeez. That's a weird, like, buzzy timbre. I love all this industrial percussion. In the there background. are three versions of her. Oh, never mind, there are more. Ooh, hello. Oh, yeah. The bass synth. Mm. There's a cool, like, chromatic common tone thing going on in the harmony in the background. Mm. Nice. Ooh, I love this long build-up. Ooh, I like how this... She showcases the timbre of her voice so well. Oh! That glass shattering was crazy. Groovy. That's interesting. <laughs> Over like monochromatic almost spe speaking. Was that a, a coin? Yeah. Hold on. It's like they're going in between kind of like rap verses that don't have any tonal center, but then they're using notes like from the chorus. Mm -hmm. The verse is still my favorite texture in this song. Ooh, it goes higher. It's like the 12-bar blues, but but strange. The piano, bass, and the vocal harmonies in the back are very, very ethereal. Uh-huh. And then it gets more electric. And we have a synth kind of constantly going on. Mmm, the growl. Ooh, she's badass. Oh, I like Ooh. that. Wood blocks. Yeah. Wood blocks. <laughs> it's interesting how silent the chorus is. And now adding in a pitch. Almost, it's like electronic marimba. Whoa, what was that transition? Ah, Ready Player Five. That's fun. It's so major when she showed up. What the heck? Okay. Okay. Whoa, that's cool. 
Okay. Really clear sound. Mmm. Chiato mm. in that timbre. Go. Yeah, I have no idea where we are. Key change? I think we're in a different key than it was before. I cannot find tonic. Where are we? Major. Where is she? Oh my god. I'm just overwhelmed, dude. I <laughs> what? Yeah, yes, what? exactly. <laughs> That's a good question. What the fuck? Those are the most interesting songs I've heard. So it wasn't bad. It was pretty damn good, but it was just very interesting. You, when you first started listening, you said you were confused. Did you continue to be confused? Yes, <laughs> I'm like really confused. I was gonna say it again. Confusion. It's confusing at first because the, the, the changing section, every keys are different and there are not much of a relating elements in between the sections. But then afterwards, I think I kind of get used to it and I, I feel like it's very interesting mm -hmm. actually because it's like, oh, I can really feel the chaos and oh. then that's probably what the song is about. I like the creativity of the sounds a lot. I do like the contrast a lot between like the bridge and everything else. It stays surprising. Like without, a, well, it's not a lot of things. It doesn't, it doesn't just use the same thing the whole time, right? It, it keeps putting in changes where it's like, oh, that's, that's not quite where I would have guessed that was going. Oh, exact opposite for me. Nothing was surprising, but I think that's just because my expectations for SM Entertainment songs, Yoo Young Jin production, and Espa in general is ever since Next Level is just a combination of various SM group sounds. So I'm like, okay, the beat chorus sounds like this group, the chorus sounds like this group, the verse sounds like this group, that kind of thing. That, that's and fair. so I was, I was like, like, okay, oh, yeah, yeah, this is this is SM, like the bridge and like towards the end with like all these riffs and stuff. This reminds me of, there's that one song by EXO. Um, Nigga Wolf, Nigga Wolf. No, 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 not that one, not it was, it was, um, I lost my mind, not it's on my, na, na, na. The riffs at the end was a deal where Pekka was like, my baby, my baby. I was like, when she was riffing, I was like, that's SM. No, the, the beginning reminded me a lot of Next Level, just like where they, like kind of where they ended off. Just cause like, I don't know, it's the sparse instrumentation with the chorus, I think, mm -hmm. is what does that. And like they use the same drum sounds. I think they continue a lot of the ideas in Next Level. This sort of offers a different side of it because it, the instrumentals are a little more sparse. Like just in terms of sonic world, I do feel like we're learning more of Espa's sensibilities as a group. In Next Level, there's always like a cushiony bass where I feel like I could rely on no matter where it went. And then even the part where they do change, it feels very lush. This feels very, way less lush. Even when there are more chords, like in the pre-chorus and the other pre-chorus, there are two pre-choruses, they keep a less spacious sort of sound. It still feels kind of narrow. It still feels kind of kind of closed off, and I like it. In the beginning, my immediate thought was um, harsh. Like it's a very harsh sound, instrumentation. I think it's because it was very percussive, but that sort of kind of spatial percussiveness where I was like, it feels cold, it feels harsh. Yeah, they've gone for a very sort of sparse sound, but with really creative sounds in it. A lot of it's very dry. Like there aren't a lot of song sounds that that have reverb or that are big sort of sustained pads. Like a lot of it's either percussion or things that are doing like a or where it's like, it's not completely just like a but it doesn't have some big tail that sort of makes it sustain or hold around. I can analyze the keys, but I think they are not that important. It's just like a color. It's just like a different color. I was thinking it was in 
F sharp overall, but then felt like it might have been lower the last time. But I, it, what I, for some reason, just like when I tried to t detect pitches, it was just not working. Oh my God, what is the bass note? Mm. It's an F. E? I hear an F. I hear an E. <laughs> Five minutes later. It's, I, oh my God, this is fucking with my ears. Much, much, much later. Honestly, it sounds like it's in between an E and an F for me. Oh my God, okay. So That's what I hear. You were right when you said earlier that one of the bass line is kind of like off key. Vindication! I think the, the first one is just E minor. It's like go to like one to four. Oh. It is an A. And then goes to F sharp minor immediately. Like no relationship at all. Yeah, it's weird because in the pre-chorus, tonality is so grounded because there's more pitch to the bass. Yeah. And you got that definite le leading tone, right? This is this is, I like this part. <laughs> Dude, the glass shattering sound with this snare is such a cool sound. Yeah, it's so so dope. I I, I kind of feel like they kind of capture the the dubstep feeling. A little bit because Tubbs has just like so many sound effects that there are just no keys at all. It's just growls. I think the sparseness of it is actually pretty attractive to me. I think that's really nice. I think it's really interesting that uh, Ji Young mentioned the space because that was actually something that I, I was kind of on the fence about. I think space in silence is very effective, but the thing that I was really sad about is that maybe it's just like my expectations of world building, uh, especially for like things that have an electronic influence. I really like it when it makes it like feels very big or like I, I think that's just what I really like. Right, and this is on the more minimalistic yeah, side. Yeah, especially that like drop. I was really excited when the glass was shattering because I thought something, we were gonna get something huge. And then it didn't exactly, and then it kind of drew me back. I'm curious if that was intentional. I think it's because it's carrying the same vibe as Next Level, which also only had a few layers. Gotcha. Because in that case, then it's less of a criticism for me and more of an observation. Because I think how they did that and how they kind of like maneuvered my expectations of the song was really effective if that was the case. Just kind of like delving into sort of like minimalism and sort of experimenting with minimalism within a drop. I like how they played, I mean, I talked about it in the, the beginning of the song, but I like the different sections to play with the levels. They also played with the pitch at which they spoke and sang. Um, so like a lot of the verses that they rapped was really high in their speaking voice. And then they would go to pre-chorus, they would start low in a singing voice and slowly build up back to like a belty high sound to build the energy back up. And that was that was a clever way to, to peel back that sound without sacrificing like instrumentation. Use literally literal pitch, low to high. Throughout, looking at the translation, like there's purpose to everything. Even like their accents where they certain words fall and are accented. I think of like punch, like that was accented. So vocally I was like, yeah, there's text painting in here. The chorus and the post chorus were sort of like a poor man's verse to me in terms of the feeling. Yeah, I agree. I think the verse set, sets up the song so well that when the chorus goes back to a quote unquote, it did feel like a poor man's version of the verse. Because the verse had that really icy instrumental in the middle where you can hear it's like in the treble-ish, middle-ish area. Yeah, it's almost like a techno industrial thing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that just gave it so much character. And I don't think the other sections quite lived up to it. The bridge is its own beast. I also love the bridge. I do, I will say that. What key do you hear the bridge in? Uh... I am faking the melody, but isn't that roughly the harmonic outline? Yes, yes. Okay. Shit. D. Okay. Yeah, that's it. The bridge, the bridge goes into B minor. You've been here, and then you have that, which is like, okay, that's a Phrygian two, and then I think it's starting a progression. It's starting around F sharp, and like the actual progression feels more centered on B. Mm. 
in my B&B. The thing though is there is a whole, have you heard of major mode bias? What is that? There's what? like this theoretical analysis of popular music that states that like statistically it's been proven that there is a major mode bias. So when you listen to something that's ambiguous, like this where you're like, where is it? Most well, of the time. Could, but do you hear the bass progression? It just went. Which is. And then where did we go at the end? It just like, it like changed and then it changed again and both of us were like, Everything changed when Nav Navis came because there was the whole major section and then everything when it went back was like all over the place. Mm. What's the what the heck is the tonal center? It's E. E minor? Yeah. Is it, is it E minor? Or is <laughs> Figure it, it out. It's F. Oh no, it is E, e minor. minor. Just like the last minute of the song. It's just like, oh my what? god. <laughs> oh, and then there's an E minor in the... Yeah, the, the pedal bass. Oh yeah, here. It's like we reached somewhere new. That's gonna be in B major. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's what they mean. It's the B major. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're in G sharp now. What? So far, one React pair thinks it ends in B major, the other React pair thinks it ends in G sharp minor. I mean, it's the same thing. <laughs> So they, they contain the same notes. Yeah, they contain scales. the same notes. They G, just start yeah. on a different note. Yeah, G sharp minor and B major. But then there was also something that happened, which is A major. Because the bass sounds like A. Uh, there's like a counter melody. And then oftentimes we will put like a sharp four so that it sounds kind of smooth. It's starting, the bass to me sounds like it's starting on A flat and then going to ba, ba, ba. Uh, but I don't think that. You know bass, what I worry about? Uh, if you have a bass line that low, that it's hard not to hear, there yeah, are no. so. No. Hey, it's not really a to no. Me, I wouldn't say it ends in a key here. What? There's when you have that low vibration, you're Ooh. you pull in other vibrations too, and yeah. there's going to be a ton of overtones. Absolutely. So I feel like it does not end in a key. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> The kids that don't have perfect pitch are saying, there is no key. People's ears are so different, so they're like drawn to- Yeah, people hear to, things differently. Yeah. Can you imagine how hard this is to sing? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just like, yeah, like no, I'm just thinking about it. Like, ridiculous. man, this is like my atonal theory homework. <laughs> it kind of seems battlefieldy because of that. Like, here's the savior, and now here's all this entropy and chaos afterwards like you don't feel like there's a tonal center but here's all these themes that we you heard through the entire song that's going to come back gimme gimme now the singing on top of it uh all the dubstep from that break um there was a cool like it kind of felt like a big like uh, opera octet at the end when everything's super chaotic and it cadences somehow um at the end i kind of like that chaos especially because all of the chaos was familiar like you'd heard all the thematic material in the beginning of the song if you hear that tritone, that's kind of what makes it really kind of eerie at the end, is that like, it could be a tritone. And I think that makes it like a B dominant seven, mm -hmm. which would be really nice because the melody is fully in B. So it looks like we're trying to go to, we're trying to do like a, but it never happens, never goes to E. So I think that's why there's like an uncomfortableness. I think that was really cool. I fucked with that. Hopefully that's, that's of any help because you know, I was like, confused the whole thing even more. Now you guys are like, see, I told you, like, yeah, it was this and that. We're gonna be going to war and I'm gonna blame it on Joe. Go off, Liam. Wait, so is that Dorian then? With the, with the flat seven? 